In this screencast, we're going to talk about the events that occur during the contraction of a muscle fiber, of one particular muscle cell. And to do that, the uh, first couple of characteristics of muscle fibers, again, muscle cells, that I want to point out are um, just these first two. We need to know these first two to understand that muscle fibers um, show excitability and they show contractility. So they're able to receive a stimulus and respond to it, and they're actually able to um, shorten, change their shape. The nerve impulse, or the stimulus that is sent by a neuron, is called an action potential. So that's the name of the electrical impulse that a neuron sends. The motor unit is it's the unit that involves one motor neuron, that's really important, one neuron, and all of the muscle fibers or muscle cells they're stimulated by that neuron. So as you can see by the diagram, we've got two motor units that are involved here, uh, but you can see that it's one particular neuron, either the red one or the blue one, and then multiple uh, muscle fibers that are stimulated by one particular neuron. So here's a diagram of a neuromuscular junction. Neuro, of course, referring to nerve, and muscular, the muscle. So the junction between the neuron, and that's the axon terminal, it's the end of the neuron, it's kind of the end of the road for the electrical impulse of the neuron, and then the muscle tissue. So shown here in this diagram, it shows the nerve impulse, or the action potential, as symbolized by the pink arrows there, and it comes down the axon, and then each of these, and it shows three of them, three axon terminals where there's the actual junction between the neuron and the muscle cell. And it's here where the action potential turns from an electrical signal to a chemical signal to, to span that gap. So in discussing what actually happens at the end of a neuron and the beginning of a muscle cell to contract, we first talk about the synapse or the synaptic cleft, and that's the gap between the nerve and the muscle. They don't actually make contact, there's a space, but some really important events occur at that space. So the first thing, we've got the, you've got the impulse, or the action potential, flowing down the neuron, and when it reaches the end, or the axon terminal, that stimulates the opening of calcium channels. And so these, these tiny channels, they open up, and the calcium ions flood into the axon terminal. That's really important. Of course, we've talked about in the skeletal system unit, and we've talked about homeostatic mechanisms, where calcium ions are really important to, to muscle contraction, and here's one of the first ways. So they flood into, into the, ax, to the axon terminal. What that causes is the vesicles inside of the axon terminal, they release ACH, uh, it's a neurotransmitter, acetylcholine, we'll talk a little bit more about it, but ACH is released into the synapse. So action potential flows down the terminal. When it gets there, that actually opens channels and calcium ions flood in, which then releases the ACH, the neurotransmitter. So once ACH, the neurotransmitter, is released into the synapse, it's essentially going to flow across to the sarcolemma, which is the cell membrane of the muscle cell, and attach to specific receptors on the surface of that muscle cell. What that does is it allows the sarcolemma to become permeable to sodium, and then sodium rushes into the cell. That action generates a new action potential in the muscle fiber itself. So that's what physically causes the muscle fiber to become stimulated. It's the rushing in of the sodium um, ions that creates the electrical signal or the new action potential in the muscle fiber itself. So now we're going to get to review this process with a diagram. So the first thing that's occurring here is refer in reference to the action potential, which is coming down the neuron and it reaches the the axon terminal, the end of the motor neuron. In response to that action potential, when it gets to the 
axon terminal, the calcium ion channels open up and calcium floods into this axon terminal. The calcium ions flooding in there into the axon terminal, that stimulates the release of the ACH. All of these little structures here, these circular structures, are called vesicles and they contain the neuro neurotransmitter ACH. That moves to the surface of the axon terminal and the little green molecules here in the picture are released into the synapse or into the synaptic cleft. The ACH, it spans the synapse and they respond or they, they, they bind to specific receptors on the sarcolemma, which is, remember, the, that is the cell membrane, a special name for the cell membrane of the muscle fiber. When the ACH binds to the receptor, that allows these sodium gates to open up and there's a, there's a sodium potassium pump that's involved through active transport. That means you actually have to use ATP or you have to use energy that the body makes from the raw materials from the food that you eat and the oxygen that you breathe in. We don't need to know the specifics about, a, about the sodium potassium pump. But the important thing is that sodium rushes into the muscle cell. That's going to stimulate the brand new action potential in the muscle. Once the ACH has essentially done its job, um, it's broken down by a specific enzyme, um, acetylcholine esterase or acetylcholine esterase. You see the ASE at the end, you know it's an enzyme. And it's just broken down. Um, this is a little beyond the scope that we need, but just know if the ACH were to stay in there, to stay in that receptor site, um, you could have continued muscle contraction. And there are some disorders caused by that very physical process. In this slide, they're just giving you the analogy of igniting a twig on fire in a specific location, and then that flame is going to spread along the twig physically from point A to point B. Well, the same thing happens as sodium diffuses into a muscle fiber, the action potential is generated here, and then it rapidly is going to spread. But it doesn't jump, it's not magically going to jump further down the line. It physically spreads rapidly along the surface or the cell membrane of the muscle fiber. The physical shortening of the muscle fiber is explained by the sliding filament theory in anatomy. And we'll take a look at this with, a, with some diagrams in a second. Um, but this assumes right now that you, you know the anatomy of a sarcomere. And the, the filaments that make up a muscle fiber, um, you've got the thick ones called myosin, and you've got the thin ones that are called actin. And what the sliding filament theory says is that the, the thick and thin filaments are going to slide by one another. So the thick filaments have these little golf club looking ends to them and those are going to latch onto the thin filament at a specific binding site and they will pull and that shortens the muscle. Let's take a look at this in some further slides. You can come back to review this part but we'll take a look at this with some diagrams. So here's a picture of a sarcomere in letter A. It's a relaxed sarcomere and the sarcomere is the area from the Z line or Z disc to Z line. So that in between is a sarcomere and letter B here is a contracted sarcomere and you can see that the distance from from the Z line to Z line has shortened. The reason that happens is you take a look at the myosin you look at the myosin filament and it has these little kind of golf club looking heads that stick out and what they do when they're, when they're energized is they grab onto the blue thin filament and they're going to pull in. So the sliding filament theory, what we're looking at here in letters A, B, and C is kind of a step-by-step -step process of the sliding filament theory. The first thing is these, these protein complex, they're called regulatory proteins, but these things on the, on the thin filaments, 
what they do is they, they block the active sites, they block the sites where these myosin heads want to latch onto. So they're blocking any sort of traction that these myosin heads can get. When an action potential, remember the electrical impulse actually stimulates the muscle fiber, you have all of these calcium ions, again we're back to calcium, and the calcium ions that are they're stored in little storage areas um, inside, of the, inside of the muscle cell, specifically in something called sarcoplasmic reticulum. But the calcium ions are allowed to bind, as you can see, they bind with those regulatory proteins and they move, they move, or they actually change shape, which now allows these little binding sites where the golf club head looking things of the, of the myosin, the cross bridges, they can attach. They have a little foothold there. So then they immediately begin, the, the myosin binding sites or the myosin cross bridges, look for those binding sites to latch on. In letter C here, the, the free myosin heads, the myosin heads, the golf club looking things again, they're kind of, they're, they're referred to as being cocked like a, or set like a mouse trap. When the myosin head actually binds to the binding site, they spring, they pivot, they pull towards the middle. And as you can see, that action, the arrows show you in letter C, that action pulls the thin filaments by the thick ones. And what that's effectively doing in a sarcomere is it's pulling and contracting along the entire muscle fiber. Well, if the muscle fibers or the muscle cells are contracting, then so is the entire muscle itself. So the contraction of a skeletal muscle um, it's referred to as all or none, all or none. What that means is that once a muscle fiber is, is stimulated to contract and is stimulated strongly enough, it's going to contract fully. Now, it's really important to know that this isn't what happens to the entire muscle. For instance, your bicep is not all or none. If it was, every time you'd pick up a pencil off your desk, you'd throw it through the ceiling. But it does refer or it does apply to individual muscle fibers, all or none. The thing about your muscles, again, like a big muscle group like your bicep, is that not all the fibers have to be stimulated at the same interval or at the same time. So different combinations can give differing responses. Those are called graded responses. Uh, it should make sense that the more motor units that are involved in an action, the more strength, the more torque, the more power you can get from a muscle contraction. If you had in your bicep, just throwing an arbitrary number out, if you had 10 motor units that stimulate the or cause the muscle contraction versus having 100 motor units involved, you should have a much stronger degree of shortening. It should have it more powerful. That's like being in a tug-of-war contest and having either two people on one side or 100 people pulling in the same direction on one side. So the increasing number of the motor units that are used is called recruitment. So you can get a graded response if you've ever been lifting weights and you first lift something and mentally it's like feeling, whoa, that wasn't enough power, that wasn't enough effort, that wasn't enough strength and so you give it a little bit more effort. Well, involuntarily, your muscles do that also. So as soon as you might pick up a barbell in a squat rack or on a bench press, as soon as you pick that up, you're going to re recruit more and more motor units to help you in the action. So to help or explain how graded responses occur, they simply occur in one or two ways. They either increase the frequency of muscle stimulation, so a faster, more frequent stimulation to the muscle cell is going to create a stronger response, or the physical number of muscle cells that are actually being stimulated at one time. Both of these, both of these different responses will give graded responses or different levels of shortening. So lastly, one thing I just want to remind you of is that you can go back
time and again in this screencast, and you can review, you can stop, you can rewind, you can start over, but review the sequences. You can keep it simple, just like we did here in this screencast, but review it over and over again.